Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be covering logistic regression. Let's get started. So what we're going to do, let's just start out with the basics of importing the data and also getting in our standard imports. Uh, what else do we want? Import Seaborn as SNS, import matplot libpyplot as plt and then we want um, matplotlib inline whoop inline uh, and then what am I going to have the data as uh, I'm just going to call it as a df for now so let's take a look at the data uh, so, all right, we have all kinds of data. What we're going to be predicting with this today, since we're doing a logistic regression that uses the sigmoid function, we're wanting to uh, predict add clicked. Now, I really hate how this looks, and so I'm going to clean the head of the data. So we can do um, uh, x dot lower dot replace. Uh, and we want spaces with underscores. Are there any periods in here? There's no periods or anything else. Um, so I'll say for x in um, df dot columns. And let's double check to see if that worked. Okay, everything looks good. So then we'll call this df dot columns. Again, what I'm using here is <clears throat> is list comprehension uh, with a little bit of uh, data cleaning here, just making everything lowercase, getting rid of spaces and converting them to uh, underscores here so we can have snake case. Um, now, the next thing that we want to do in here is let's look at, again, let's just let's double check the head of the data. Um, so we have bunch of numerical we have some strings we have a, a dummy variable for whether someone's male or not the country and a timestamp and then what we're wanting to predict uh, let's also grab the information for the data and double check that everything's in the way that we want it to we have floats and integers we have some objects now we may or may not want to convert these to dummy variables I'm not sure what I want to do at the moment um, but we will we will see um, the next thing that I want to do is let's do a little bit of an EDA. Um, so let's do let's start out the EDA real quick. So we have here um, what do we want first? Actually, let's look at the uh, let's look at the descriptive statistics, and that's a little ugly so I'm going to transpose that. No, that did not work the way I wanted it to. We'll just do it this way then. Uh, everything seems to be okay on here um, regarding maxes and mins. Now let's actually check about uh, some of our data. So specifically let's look at, we want to look at age and we can do uh, something like a plot kind equals a hist, and then we can have our bins equal uh, 30. And let me clean that up a little bit. So we can see that it's kind of normal-ish in shape, but that's not quite, we have, we have some spikes in here. Um, again, where people have a tendency to be older or not, and it does have a bit of a tail in here, but I don't know if it would be enough if we want to actually um, do any type of normalization on it. Um, but we'll see. Let's also maybe check a joint plot uh, to see what what we have going on with our age and with um, our area income to see what the relationship is there. Oh, and I did that again. I want to. Oh, okay. So you guys kind of notice that every once in a while I keep rerunning this, and what I'm doing is I'm putting this uh, 
semicolon here and it will get rid of that little uh, generator uh, line there so then it looks a little bit cleaner here again we see we have a little bit of skew in each of them but it still kind of looks like a shotgun blast but one thing that we need to kind of look at here is there's probably some issues with the density on where the observations actually lie and I think that's important for us to kind of investigate a little bit further and that's why we're going to take this whole thing again and I'm actually going to go a little bit deeper on here and let's say we want something like um, kind and I want a uh, hex whoops need a comma here and so we can see definitely that there is more observations here again it's kind of easy to see here but just to double check where it is most of our observations are lying somewhere between the area income of 60 to 70,000 and the age range is somewhere around uh, 30 years of age to 40 years of age um, so again that gives us kind of an idea of what's going on with this particular set of data let's also do a, a KDE distribution um, now I don't really want it on area income now let's talk about uh, daily time spent on the site and we want to see how that potentially affects uh, affects based on their age so again maybe we expect oh that doesn't look great but it's it's still okay so <clears throat> you know what let's let's change up the color um, this is white and again it, so what's happening here this looks like a topo map when we talk about a KDE plot and so we have two separate sections here so there's a lot of observations up here there's a lot of vision observations down here it's where they're kind of clustered at but it is kind of hard to see it with this white background so let's change our color um, and I'll do green for now you guys can pick you guys can pick any color that you really want to uh, some people maybe prefer blue but this green I always find is a kind of a nice coloration um, that didn't again it still didn't do the way that I want it to maybe they changed the way of the shading hmm if you have to do shade it's like true or something yeah. like that that's what I had to do to get that to work yeah let's see here yeah okay so I, I still don't like that red red's ugly um so are you okay so used to the shade its default value used to be true okay um, I'm gonna make it green I like the green color um, so again but you can still see that a majority here is of age 30 years old for their time spent on the site so maybe what this actually means is that the people that are using this site actually just maybe have a tendency to be 30 years old that happens to be their demographic that they're using it doesn't necessarily mean anything else otherwise um so let's also do a joint plot with um did i actually uh, that's fine um let me go on and let's do another joint plot here um and let's do x is equal to our daily time spent on the site and we want y is equal to our daily internet usage uh, data is equal to df oh and I did it again that's fine so here again now you see here that we actually have two separate sections happening here okay it's actually definitely you we could potentially even look at these as two different clusters there's a, almost a perfect whoops there's almost a perfect split down the middle right here you guys can kind of see that okay so we have a group big grouping here and we have a big grouping over here um, now again let's maybe talk about why this may be so we have daily internet usage here and then time spent on site so the question is, is why would it actually be partitioned here honestly I'm not really sure um, but again you can also see that the density itself is okay there's a little bit of a hump here a little bit of a hump here same thing with here it has this almost a, a, a bimodal transformation going on there and that it's actually probably um, 
this internet usage by time is actually what's causing that because they're both relatively bimodal in nature. Um, let's see, what else here? Uh, the next one. All right, this is this is actually where it's gonna. This is gonna probably take a little bit of time whenever I'm doing the pair plot. Uh, pair plot, and we want uh, df, and then we're going to set our hue to be uh, clicked on add. Uh, I'm just gonna leave the palette. Well, I guess I'll give you guys the palette that we, I've been using. Palette here is BWR. And this is basically what this means is blue to red. Okay. Um, so it'll, it'll wind up having it. And this is gonna actually give us a pretty decent look here. Um, now, what we're looking at here is down along this line here, all right, we have our, these aren't actually the histograms, these are just the KDE plots. And again, we can see here that most of our data when it comes to whether an ad was clicked on or not is very, they're very split on how and why this happened. Um, so that's actually good for us. That means that probably if we if we look at this, it may actually do well. But since these look like shotgun blasts, if you notice, they're perfectly circular. Again, this is this is fake data. You don't see any a lot of correlation going on in there. There's no upward trend or anything like that. Now we can also change this. Um, you know, I got to remember what the aspect is because things have changed a little bit since the last time I used this. Um, so we can do, we want to change the diagonal, uh, and we'll do diag kind, whoops, why is that not changing for me, diag kind, and what was the one that I wanted to change that to, okay, we want to change this to hist, here for a histogram, because right now they're just doing the KDE plot. Now, but we would prefer to have our histograms because they look, uh, they give us a little bit more idea about what's going on, particularly whenever it does the bending. So let's give that a look-see here. <clears throat> now, another thing that is something that we should talk about is that there are these major separations here. Okay, so these separations here and here. Again, this is because of uh, the binary nature of the data. So this is, for example, um, I think this one was clicked, or was it male or female? Which one is it? Uh, male. So again, here, uh, a zero is a female, a one is a male. So we can also see here that we change this to our our histograms along the diagonal. Uh, and then let's see. Now let's actually get into the logistic regression itself. Okay. So, uh, so first off, let's do from sklearn dot model selection, import our train test split, and we want to set our x uh, is going to be our data, and then what do we want here? We want our daily time spent on the site. Oh, and you know what? I need to do this correctly. Uh, we want our age. We want our area income. Uh, we want our daily internet usage. And then we want whether they were male or female. And then we want Y is going to equal here um, what we want to do. Uh, clicked on add. Now, usually, let me show this real quick. No, that didn't, that wasn't what I wanted. Um, and actually, you know what, I can, see, what it, the reason that I actually typed all of this out Okay, is because there's actually a couple, several things that we didn't use in here. If I was going to use everything except for the for this clicked on add, I would use the drop function, even if I had maybe two or three. But the fact is, is that I was going to be dropping city, country, uh, add topic line, timestamp. So it was just easier just to type everything out. 
in this instance. So then now we need to do our train test split here. And again, I'm going to go down and, and grab their example, paste that in, get rid of this. And I'm going to just use their standard uh, for their train test split. Now we actually need to train the model. So from SK learn, and then we want our linear model. Again, this is a logistic regression, which is a linear model. Um, so we'll just call this, um, I'm just gonna call it model. For now, we need to instantiate our model. We need to do our model.fit. And let me move that up again. And we need to do this on our training data. X train and Y train. Okay, we are going to keep the standard usage here. We're not going to be doing anything uh, with our hyperparameter tuning at the moment. Now we need to create our predictions and evaluate the model. So uh, let me add this in here. Okay, and so. Um, predictions and model eval. So predictions, we're going to do something like a model dot predict. Okay, and we're going to do x test, then we want to do from sk learn dot, uh, we're going to just import metrics. And then we need to print our classification. Whoops, uh, I want our metrics dot classification report and we want to do it on x test with our predictions or our y hat predictions and so we see that actually this is doing pretty darn good okay we are our accuracy and precision here are well above 80 um, and then our F score is 91. Um, er, both of our support seems to be relatively balanced in this nature. Uh, so this is actually overall, it's a pretty decent model. Um, and again, we can probably, if we go through and we take uh, something like our city or our country or some of these other data, uh, some of this other data and turn them into dummy variables or something else, we could probably squeeze out a little bit more data, but we might wind up overfitting the model. Even now having this high accuracy and precision, I would I would actually be a little hesitant saying we maybe overfit the model a little bit, but that's something maybe neither here nor there at the moment since this is just a very basic, again, fictitious data set. <laughs>